Filipino conceived Dr. Alfonso Doc Bui loves had carried on with a more full life than the vast majority can envision prior to getting back to the Philippines. For all time he spent almost 20 years as a doctor and school teacher in the US. He was likewise a caring spouse and father a giver, a nature sweetheart, a deep-rooted student, and an accomplished cavern jumper who routinely put himself in risky circumstances that said there is a phenomenal thing about investigating the secretive captivated waterway cavern complex in his nation of origin at 68 years old everybody expected it would be one more achievement in the specialist distinguished life still what ought to have been an elating instructive and predictable jump transformed into repulsiveness the hinachuan charmed stream or consecrated waterway is a saltwater spring situated in the remote piece of the island of sanctum now in the South Focal Philippines, however, up until 2017, it pulled in scores of sightseers. Researchers, geologists and cavern jumpers who came to concentrate on it, look at its excellence and swim in its strikingly clear water, yet well before it came a business fascination. The stream was venerated and regarded by local people who accepted it had puzzling unexplainable and surprisingly supernatural properties, as per one legend, the stream and encompassing banks are occupied by legendary spirits, equipped for taking on both human structure and creature structures like shapeshifters. In local American old stories, there have likewise been reports that the fish in the stream are excessively cunning to be gotten by net lance snare and line or some other technique neighborhood. Fishers concocted to get them anything that the case numerous locals, except the powerful substances, go about as the waterways defenders at just shy of 985 F2, 300M long the Hinachuan captivated stream, is really a huge spring and not a bona fide waterway anyway. What? It needs size it, more than compensates for in glory. It starts at a 8224. 5 meter opening on its western end and discharges into a salty estuary close to the Philippine Ocean at its eastern end. Its profound clear waters run the ruse from emerald like greens in lively turquoises to unpretentious purples in practically every shade of blue. However, unexpectedly, that watercolor doesn't really change starting with one part of the waterway, then onto the next, in rather its disparities and profundities light discernment and the scythesis of the banks and base that make the view. Of various varieties, the vast majority of the spring is encircled by a thick covering of rich tropical plant life, comprised of plants, greeneries, and other vegetation that stifle out a large part of the daylight, yet under the spring's immaculate surface, its construction is undeniably quite mind-boggling and perplexing from above, as a matter of fact researchers and jumpers went through years, attempting to track down the wellspring of the spring's water. However, they generally came up with nothing basically, this was the situation until 1999, when a jumper named Alex Santos at long last found a tight way concealed at the lower part of the spring's most profound pool this door prompted. An organization of caverns, channels, and different chambers that gave a consistent stock of water and gone about as a characteristic filtration framework that kept the spring completely clear the entire year anyway. Alex Santos didn't wander exceptionally far inside the main top to bottom. Investigation was done out by Dr. Loves and two different individuals from the Filipino cavern jumpers. Over 10 years after the fact in February 2010, subsequent to falling through the tight opening in a steady, progression they entered a progression of huge chambers associated by somewhat limited paths one of which they named Doc Entryway Dr. Mores and his kindred jumpers were interested by the cavern framework and they were persuaded that it was far bigger than they or Alex Santos might have perhaps envisioned eventually they made five separate lives they couldn't investigate the whole mind-boggling yet what they found gave researchers a more clear image of the cavern design and how water moved through it. 
Yet Dr. Alonso knew that he'd just seen a hint of something larger, and he promised to return some time or another to complete what he began Alfonso at. Mores was naturally introduced to an enormous family on the Martin Island in the Philippines. In 1946, he and his kin cherished investigating the normal world around them, and even as young people everybody realized that they were bound for extraordinary things, Alfonso and his more seasoned. Sibling Tino were especially entranced by the intricacy of the human body and how the different frameworks cooperated years after the fact the two of them became first-class clinical specialists in their particular fields and their sibling Mario became one of the greatest positioning public authorities in them. Close by Lapa Lapo City, he'd constantly serious areas of strength for being and sound however he was determined to have a heart condition. At 40 years old, all things considered he wasn't going to let that dial him back or wreck him from his own or proficient plans as his vocation advanced he turned into a separated individual from the American leading body of a medical procedure and the American School of Specialists. Yet some way or another, he carved out opportunity to seek after side interests. Like cavern plunging while in the US, he accepted his cavern jumping confirmation from the public relationship of cavern jumpers in. Florida Alfonso partook in his time in the US yet, as he matured, he could never again disregard his wistfulness for his introduction to the world country, he moved back to the Philippines, he then helped to establish, and in the end, be became leader of the Filipino cavern jumpers relationship there. Had forever been a couple of stalwart cavern jumpers in the Philippines. However, this noticeable, a defining moment after which the nation's generally little cavern, plunging local area filled dramatically. Yet in the early going, he frequently pigeon alone in light of the fact that he was unable to find anyone who might need to go along with him on these more risky makes a plunge 2002 he set off on a mission to demonstrate a hypothesis he fostered a couple of years prior to during his time in america he saw that southern florida's environment and geography were like those of his childhood home of the maitai island as such he accepted that they ought to have comparative submerged cave frameworks as well and exactly as expected, he set off to find one sometime thereafter. He did precisely that by finding the port. Submerged cave framework on Mocton Island, after the set of experiences making jump he told a neighborhood. Writer how dreamlike and on spee spiring it was to enter a neglected seagoing chamber that stayed immaculate for incalculable centuries. All things considered, he immediately put his focus on new difficulties as his adoration for cave jumping kept on developing he chose to make the change from customary open circuit scuba stuff to more complicated bulky and in fact requesting shut circuit rebreathers in the wake of breezing through the serious course without a hitch he accepted his sporting CC re teacher certificate from the global relationship of nighters and specialized jumpers Toward the beginning of June 2014, 68-year-old Dr. Mores went on to a difficult night, make a plunge Matan Island with a dear companion from a close-by city. Sometime thereafter, they arranged and stuffed the stuff that Afonso would require for an impending series of jumps at the charmed stream. His companion really wanted to see how invigorated Alfonso was to be returning after such countless years and he trusted this excursion would be considerably more fulfilling and illuminating than last time, he likewise realized that he and his kindred jumpers would confront a lot of difficulties en route, especially when they were leaving the complicated cavern. After each jump, it's simpler for jumpers to enter the captivated waterway cavern than it is to leave it this is on the grounds that they swim with the ebb and flow on the way in however against it on the exit. Plan lowered cave openings like this are called siphons, and they're more difficult and risky than some other caverns since cave jumpers should apply more energy toward the finish of the plunge when they're drained and running nearly out of oxygen, and on these jumps Alonso and his. Understudy jumpers would have added pressure since they'd be directing a submerged movie group 
that would assemble film for a narrative delivered by the GMA7 network for its famous TV program destined to be Wild Alfonso and his group went through the morning Tuesday, June 17, 2014, setting up their stuff and investigating the day's plunge plan. This was the second jump of the excursion, yet they were just investigating the cavern for good shooting areas the movie team wasn't booked to make. Its most memorable jump until the next day, subsequent to doning their breathing contraption, they entered the unmistakable water over the most profound piece of the spring and started sliding toward the tight entry, roughly 130 ft, or 40 m down, however, at around 100 ft or 30 mt, went over a mass of tangled branches and logs that was somewhat hindering Doc's entryway, just past two particular sections, drove into City Hall Leader's Chamber, which was estimated 120 ft, or 36 m long, 100 FD wide and 26 F high. At its tallest point first, Alfonso motioned for his understudies to enter through the path known as Bernal's Creep yet. Silt had gathered by the entry, and the flow was areas of strength for excessively them to swim through. In light of the fact that they were plunging at low tide, the water emerging from the entry was far more grounded than typical in light of the fact that it wasn't being checked by an approaching tide next. They attempted the subsequent path, known as Patrice's Way. The momentum here was major areas of strength, for additionally somewhat more sensible, so Bonso motioned for his understudies to enter. Individually, the limited way precluded them from entering simultaneously yet. The understudies contended energetically, and in the long run, made it into the chamber once they were inside Alfonso took action. Accordingly, he eventually kicked his direction through after seemingly an unending length of time. However, he was at that point exhausted when he joined the understudies in. The chamber getting into the cavern had been undeniably surprisingly troublesome and debilitating, and this implied that every one of the jumpers had utilized a greater amount of their valuable oxygen. Gas combination than expected, and again they actually had the hardest place of the plunge in front of them. Taking into account how things had gone up to that point, Alfonso would have been legitimate in cancelling the jump. As a plunge chief, it really depended on him to survey what is happening and decide the most shrewd and most secure strategy, and in any case, finishing the jump could never have been an enormous arrangement in jumping well-being generally starts things out, and they might have given it another attempt the next day when the tide was coming in, it's muddled why Alonso chose to press on yet. He might have been stressed over remaining on time for the GMA7 film group later. All he fabricated his own and proficient notorieties on his capacity to follow through on his commitments yet rather than nixing the jump and returning, when conditions further developed, he and his two understudies went on into the city hall leader's chamber. From that point, they passed a construction known as Calvin's kneecap and one more called Paul's P entry prior to progressing forward with a 45 climb to around 285 FD or 85 FM. As of now, Ayonso shrewdly chose to end the plunge this seemed okay. Since they were at that point drained and running nearly out of oxygen and the most troublesome and truly depleted piece of the plunge was still in front of them presently. In currently debilitated states, they'd leave the cavern battling against the ongoing that would be significantly more grounded than the one they experienced on how and when they arrived at Doc's entryway. Understudy J. Jamie Layak was shocked that Alfonso motioned for him to swim out first, since Alfonso previously had been the final remaining one to enter the cavern toward the start of the jump he ought to have been the first to leave this could be deciphered in a number of ways. First, Alfonso probably won't have felt open to abandoning his understudies him. Of course he might have thought that he needed more solidarity to make it out, and provided that this is true, he could not have possibly believed them should squander what little energy they had passed on. To save him anything the case, the understudies knew that it was so vital to consent to the jump chief choices beyond a shadow of a doubt, or wavering Alonso, 
was by a long shot the most experienced jumper in the gathering, and to the extent that they realized he had a justification for switching around the leave request at the last. Once more, moment now at Doe's entryway, the three jumpers were stunned at the power of the ongoing pushing against them. As they edged towards the entry, Jamie saw Alfonso wasn't kicking his legs. As overwhelmingly as he ought to have then, Alonso neglected to answer suitably when Jame offered him the moffa, all right hint, to tell him that he was going to swim through. He found this odd and marginally upsetting, on the grounds that they were moderately close and taking a gander at one another, notwithstanding. The ongoing, the more youthful and more grounded understudies figured out how to impel themselves through the siphon and into the overall security of the profound pool from which they could see the surface. Alfonso made different endeavours to follow yet each time he slipped endlessly further away from the leave. Watching from the opposite side Jamie turned around to check whether he could help his companion and tutor, yet only a negligible part of a second after the fact. He had a stunning disclosure at that point. He understood he was truly and intellectually depleted that his gas was almost gone and that swimming back through the exit would likely be a capital punishment, Jimmy and the other jumper, were understudies yet, that didn't mean they were unpracticed as a matter of fact, Alonso couldn't ever have inquired, as to whether he didn't feel that they were capable, the understudies had been educated, to focus on their own security in any way. Event, when one more part, was in some hot water, and presently they were setting their preparation in motion, in the most sad circumstance possible. They at last broke the outer layer of the captivated streams. Roughly 75 minutes after they entered the water, yet tragically, somebody extremely dear to them had been abandoned Alfonso, probably experienced blended feelings watching them swim away into the void. However, then again he probably perceived that without their help, his possibility enduring dropped to almost zero. Regardless, he attached himself to the security line he might have done this to give himself a second, to recuperate after which he'd put forth another fearless attempt to get himself out of. The cavern another hypothesis is that he tied himself to the line to make it more straightforward for heroes to track down his body, assuming this is the case he realized. His destiny was fixed in the meantime on a superficial level. His stunned and exhausted understudies hauled themselves out of the water and promptly advised specialists that the specialist was missing someplace in the cavern Alfonso's significant other child girls, and Kin raced to the area however, when salvage jumpers showed up on the scene, everybody realized he was without a doubt. Dead to exacerbate the situation, the states of the cavern entrance were no greater than they were hours before since. Endeavoring to enter the cavern, would jeopardize significantly more lives heroes had barely a choice, however to delay the pursuit, until conditions supported eventually Alfonso's dead body, was found around 130T or 40M, inside the cavern following a eight-hour search, later the post. Mortem examination, uncovered that he passed on from a coronary failure, in the end his age and heart condition might have placed him in extraordinary peril, toward the finish of a generally debilitating, and in fact testing. Jump that, presumably, ought to have been cut short in the early proceeding to a court. To something like one source, a gentle instance of pneumonia, the prior week might have likewise added to his death, and so I need to thank you for observing.